And it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're taking a look at the latest and greatest from MSI. This is the Intel B760 Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4. Keep watching to find out more. So today we'll be taking a look at the MSI B760 Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4. And there's a couple of versions of this board on the market. There's a DDR5 version, obviously. So if you do want to get involved with the DDR5 and you want to spend the extra money, then if you're building a new rig, then that possibly will make sense. And actually, weirdly, the DDR5 version does appear to be actually cheaper than the DDR4 version, especially here in the UK. This is effectively kind of on release date, and the actual retail price for this is somewhere in the region of about $220, the US street price. Although here in the UK, because of exchange rates, etc., etc., I actually picked this one up for just a shade over £230, which actually seems like a uh, quite a lot of money for a motherboard. And in fact, the processor that we're going to be pairing with this, which is the 13500, actually only costs £250. So £250 for the processor, £230 for the motherboard. You're looking at £500 for a combo, which to me actually seems a little bit crazy. But anyway, it is what it is. That is the way modern processing and modern gaming and all that kind of stuff is seeming to go with AM5 prices going through the roof. This is unfortunately the new normal as much as I hate to say it. So I don't feel overly bad about it because this is a very well spec board. It's got a load of cool features on there. And when the prices get to some sort of reasonable level, I should be able to put in a 13900K in this and not have any issues whatsoever. Now there are going to be some limitations with the B760 chipset, such as there's basically no overclocking. So you can enable XMP for your RAM and you can do other very minor adjustments in terms of processor speed, but effectively when it comes to actual multiplier overclocking, then you cannot do this on this board. Even if you do buy a K-series processor, it just isn't going to happen. But realistically, the way most Intel and even AMD processors these days run, overclocking them is kind of pointless. They basically just run and run and run until they get to their thermal headroom, and then that is kind of it. So realistically, there's not a great deal you can do. You can do a little bit of tweaking with the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, and we'll be taking a look at that in a follow-up video later on, so do stay tuned for that one. But overall, yeah, I think it's a pretty decent board. It's got some really nice specs. Something which really appeals to me is the USB support. It's got some really good USB support, which we'll take a look at as we go through the board tour. So I think we should start off with that straight away. But first of all, we'll start off with the unboxing process. Now, actually, this is something which I find very unusual from MSI. MSI generally do show some care and attention to their motherboard boxes. And this seems a very bland affair. There's not a great deal going on. It basically just tells you the very bare minimum, the motherboard name, MSI logo, the processors it supports. Now this does support 13th gen out of the box. So if possibly you're thinking about dipping your toes back into the world of Intel processors and you're deciding between 12th or 13th gen processors, this will support either straight away, straight out of the box. So you've got no problems there. If you go for a B660 chipset, there's a strong possibility that the 13th gen chips won't work without a BOSS update. And if you've bought a motherboard that doesn't have a BOSS flashback utility, you're gonna find yourself in a whole world of trouble. So for the extra money, in terms of the actual the B660 version of this versus the B760 version, the prices are kind of almost the same. So in terms of having a board which is ready to go straight out of the box, so I think it's worth spending that little bit extra just to give yourself that little bit of security and not having to get your motherboard sent back and reflashed. Other things this board supports, which is, uh, well, whether or not it's a good thing or not, I don't know, uh, TPM 2.0 and it's fully Windows 11 compatible, which is a, a great thing, I suppose. You've got Lightning Gen 5 support. So we do have PCI Express Gen 5 on this particular board. Now it isn't across the entire board, it is only for the graphics card slot, but I suppose that is gonna give you a little bit of future proofing when those PCI Express Gen 5 graphics cards hit the shelves. On the back of the box goes through some more of the key features. So you've got the robust power design. So this has actually got a 12 plus one plus one phase design using 75 amp chokes, which is actually a really nice thing to see. They could have cheaped out on that a little bit, but it's nice to see they've gone with 75 amp chokes. We've also got Lightning 20G, so that is for your USB 3.2 times 2. There is a Type C port on the back which supports that. And also you've got Wi Fi 6E, which is an awesome spec. And also you have Bluetooth 5.3, which brings a, a few new features to disable. Should you want to use Bluetooth, I'm guessing it's going to be one of those things that is nice to have, but not really one of those things that you differentiate a board over Wi Fi and Bluetooth, but it's nice to have it thrown in. You also got something which is pretty cool. You have got 2.5 gigabit LAN. Uh, unfortunately, it's not an Intel setup on this. It's a Realtek chipset, but 
I've actually used the Realtek chipset many times before, the RTL 8125BG, I believe it is, and it works very well. I use it for my NAS, I use it for my other PCs, and I find it to work very, very well indeed. So Lightning Gen 5, we've said about that already. Uh, extended heatsink design, as you'd expect with modern motherboards these days. It's got heat sinks up the wazoo, and you've got M.2 shields for all of the M.2 slots, so not just the top one, you have got complete coverage there. And also you've got memory boost, so this is gonna support up to 128 gigabytes of RAM at DDR4 5333 megahertz, which is uh, yeah right up there. I don't think I've actually seen a kit of RAM on the market at that speed, but if you wanna put in some 4400, 4200, or whatever you can do, or if you just wanna use 32 or 36, you can do as well. Obviously, depending on what processor you're gonna be using, you may find there's some limitations, but generally you can just enable XMP and it, you're off to the races. Also on there, it gives you some specifications and also gives you a layout of the IO, but we'll take a closer look at that later. When it comes to actually unboxing it, obviously you get the motherboard itself. You don't get the processor, that's mine, but I've put it in there to protect the pins because, well, LGA being LGA, you don't want to damage pins, so I'd rather put a processor in there to protect them than uh, leave it completely bare. The unboxing process is very, very meager indeed. So for some reason, you get all these stickers, so you can actually attach these to SATA cables, power cables, ARGB cables, so you can label them up, so you can color code them. You also get battery cover so if you don't want your BIOS battery which is basically never going to be seen anyway because it's going to be hopefully underneath your great graphics card but if it isn't then you do have the option to put stickers on them but yeah so you get a sticker sheet something you don't get which is very weird and I've never experienced this before with a what I would consider a mid to high tier board is you don't get a user manual there is no user manual included in the box whatsoever so gone are the days of those nice shiny printed manuals telling you exactly what all the jumpers and bits and pieces are that has gone, unfortunately. But what we do get to make up for that, we do get a European Union regulatory notices, which is gonna be really handy. You also get a quick installation guide, which is kind of universal, but semi-useful, I guess. Something else, which is a really meager affair, you get one SATA cable. Is it actually worth it? One SATA cable. I remember the days where you used to get, if you're lucky, you'd get four. Generally, you'd get two, but to just get one, I think, is uh, really tight. But then again, let me know in the comments, are you still using SATA drives? Something else you do get two of is the Wi-Fi antenna, which I guess you kind of need to for the uh, MIMO setup we've got here. So si Wi-Fi 6E, and you've got two antenna. Not the greatest, but better than nothing. And last of all, there is a M.2 locker. So the M.2 drives have gone under somewhat of a kind of uh, renaissance in terms of how they're actually mounted to the motherboards. So what we've got now is a little screw and it's also got a little plastic clasp which goes around and basically locks your drive in. So you don't have to worry about fiddling around with those tiny little screws, which is excellent. So yeah, just lock it in with a little plastic clip. There is a spare in there, although they are pre-installed on the board. So you've got three M.2 slots. You've got one here at the top, which is your PCI Express Gen 4, which is powered from the CPU. And underneath this shield here at the bottom, there's another two, which are both PCI Express Gen 4 times 4 which are powered from the chipset. And I think that's uh, probably a good place to start with the motherboard tour. So we'll look at the top first of all. So on the top, you have actually got a pair of EPS connectors, eight pin ones. So if you want to, you can connect up both of those to deliver the extra power that may well be required for your 13900KS. Most people will be fine just with the standard eight pin. That is the minimum you can get away with on here. Four pin does not work. I have tried it already. Um, yeah, easy to get to, I guess. So also at the top, you've got a ton of heat sink material here. So along this section here, you've got this big chunk, which all of this is metal. It's not a plastic shield, it is all metal. And you've got the same over this side for that 12 plus one plus one VRM phase with the 75 amp chokes, which is very nice. Obviously in the middle there, you've got your LJ 1700 socket, which we're not entirely sure how things are going to go. It does appear that the 14th gen Intel is kind of slightly cancelled or maybe postponed. So potentially we will be seeing the LJ1700 socket maybe stretching its legs a little bit further with a few refreshes of the 13th gen processors. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section. At the moment, who knows? It could go in any direction. At the top here, we've got all our connectivity and also you've got your RAM slots. So RAM slots, you've got four RAM slots. Like I said, supporting up to DDR4, 5333 megahertz. Yeah, no problems there at all. Four slots is absolutely fine. You've got at the top here, a bunch of connections. Now, a lot of these connections in the manual, which is actually online, which you can scan the QR code on the box and go to. I hate those things, but you can do it. A lot of the connectors, they don't tell you about. So effectively, I'm gonna do exactly the same and not tell you about them because they are essentially for either programming or for specific features built into MSI cases. So 
do bear that in mind if I've gone through something and you've, or Mike, you've missed out those pins, is because you basically don't need them. So in this top section, we've got our CPU fan and CPU optional. Again, something else which has been upgraded on all the CPU fan headers and also the water pump header is the fact that they've all got upgraded wattage or amperage. So all of the CPU and fan headers are gonna be two amp minimum and the AIO pump is going to be a three amp one, so you can connect up a large water pump on there for your water cooling solutions. Next to those two at the top, you've got a standard 12 volt RGB. Next to that, a five volt three pin addressable RGB. And then we've got one of the first fan headers. Then another fan header, so if you've got a couple of sets of fans up front, you can connect all that up there, which is nice to see. Something else which is going to be nice to see, which uh, can save your bacon in some instances, is your diagnostic D-LED goes through the usual thing. So the first LED is gonna be for your CPU, then your DRAM, then your VGA, then your boot. So if the DE LEDs get stuck on any one of those, that is gonna point you in the direction of what is causing your system to not boot up fully. Underneath that, 24 pin power connector, nothing unusual there. And underneath that, we've got the USB 3.2 connection for the front panel headers. And also you've got a USB 3.2 type C front panel header, both in nice places for easy access. Talking of easy access, there is something which isn't easy access, and that is over this side, there is a very small system fan header. So for your rear fans on your PC case, there is a header just in there. You might just be able to get into it. Likely that you'll have to remove the M.2 shield to gain access to that, but it's not the end of the world. There's only two screws anyway, so that's fine. Uh, moving down, so we have got the heatsink over our chipset here, which is the B760 chipset, as we've mentioned numerous times already. You've got four SATA ports on there which may or may not be useful these days with M.2 being as cheap and effective as it is at the moment and also not needing as much cabling, wiring, etc. So that's pretty handy. Uh, you've got your JTPM connector, so TPM header connector there. You've also got your front panel connection for your reset switch, power switch, LEDs, all that kind of stuff. Next up, you've got JFP2, which is for system speaker. So if you're um, not really keen on the diagnostic DLEDs and you'd rather hear your PC beep when it boots up, you can connect up a PC speaker to there and that will do the job for you there. Underneath, there is an additional Thunderbolt port. So if you want to add another additional Thunderbolt, you can do there. There is a JT1 port at the top here, which I believe is a standard Thunderbolt port if you've got one built in to a case or whatever, but most people will never use that. But if you want to add in a separate module, then you can do on there. You've got your JC1, which is your chassis intrusion. So you can check all that stuff down there. You've got a pair of USB 2.0 headers. There is a port there for the J-1, which is some kind of um, kind of utility LCD type display, which you can plug in to monitor overclocking and all that kind of stuff. Again, most people will never need to use that. You have got your J-BAT1, so that is your CMOS reset. Next to that, there are a pair of fan headers, and you've got a JRGB, which is your addressable RGB, your rainbow connector, and then you've also got your RGB, 12 volt RGB down the bottom there. Front panel I.O. for your onboard audio, of which is the Realtek RTL897 chipset, delivering up to 7.1 audio via speedif or through 3.5 mil jacks. Um, at the bottom here, so you've got two M.2 ports there. Underneath that, you've probably seen some B-roll with that removed. Basically, you get two slots there, PCI Express Gen 4 times 4 on both of those. At the bottom there, you've got a PCI Express Gen 3 times 1 port, Gen 3 times 16 size slot, but that is only wired for times 4. And then you've got your PCI Express Gen 5 times 16 slot here, which has also got the MSI armor around it to hold things in place, which is awesome. You've got your CMOS battery over there, as we said earlier. If you want to, you can put a sticker on that. And I think that is uh, pretty much it for the board. I should probably clarify with the fan headers as well. The one which is for the AIO is the CPU optional at the top. So CPU 1 is a normal 2 amp, C CPU 2 or optional is the three amp port. So just to clarify that, and let's take a look at the back. So this is where I quite like what is going on here. So no more PS2 ports, awesome, glad they're gone. So we've got four USB 2.0 ports, so that's gonna be great for keyboard, mouse, headset, that sort of stuff. So keep all that separate. You've then got your HDMI and display ports. So display port is gonna be 1.4 and HDMI is gonna be 2.1. So you can get uh, 4K 60 Hertz out of the HDMI and up to 8K 60 hertz from the display port, which is uh, obviously gonna be dependent on what processor you put in here, whether it's got integrated graphics and what level of graphics. Then you've got four USB 3.2, 10 megabit per second ports. Nice to see those, and 2.5 gig LAN, as we said. Next up, there is USB Type-C, so that is USB Gen 3.2 times two, 
20 gigabits per second. You've got your Wi-Fi 6E there, SMA connectors to screw on your antennas. And then you've got your audio and also the optical speed if. So there you go, there is a tour of the board, something which again, you probably have noticed already, there's no BIOS flashback on this, so you will be safe from that, from your subscription feed, there won't be MSI how to flash this board, so that isn't gonna happen. We will do a BIOS tour though, although again, it is gonna be relatively minimal because there isn't any overclocking involved on this, so it kind of is what it is. But overall, I think it's a nice looking board. I think that as with AM5, a lot of these boards have become a lot more expensive than they should be. I guess in there are is a lot more complexity. This now has a six layer PCB due to all the tracks, etc., running through it. And you've got two ounce copper separating it as well. So there's a lot that goes into these boards now. It's not like the entry level boards are entry level boards now. It's like the entry level boards are basically what were high end boards on the B450 platform. So if you look at the prices we experienced when they came out, it kind of does make sense, but it's not something which is overly palatable. I guess we're going to be looking forward to the H710 chipset to uh, get some real value out of this. But having said that, I have tried my Intel 13500 on here, did a very, very quick Cinebench score, and it already beats my uh, Ryzen 7 5800X, and also my previous version 3900X. So it scores better on that already, so I'm pleased in that regard because I am going to use this for content creation, which... Uh, yeah, it's basically what it's going to be for. It's going to be super stable. Something else actually I noticed as well, which is a really helpful thing. When you first install Windows on this, either Windows 10 or Windows 11, there is an option in the BOSS where it'll pop up very much like Asus do with their Armory Crate, but not as bad. So it comes up saying, do you want to install all the chipset drivers for all the features on the motherboard, which I've found absolutely brilliant. How many times have I used a, a board previously where I've been struggling to find various different Intel drivers, the ME driver, the chipset driver, things for LAN, etc. Real pain in the backside. So rather than actually having to use a motherboard CD or manually going to the website and finding drivers, this thing just pops up, says, do you want to install these drivers? Yes or no? Absolutely brilliant. I love seeing that. And it's going to make life a lot easier when people are setting up these things and thinking, well, why is it not performing as it should do? Or why is X not working? Or why is something else not behaving as it should do? That is gonna eradicate, hopefully, all of that. So that is a very good inclusion. Well done, MSI. And overall, I think pretty much well done, MSI. In terms of pricing, yeah, pricing is not great, but overall, I think it's a very good board and it is gonna serve its purpose. But what I think about it isn't important. What you think about it is, so let us know in the comment section below, what do you think about the MSI Tomahawk B760 Wi-Fi DDR4? Should I have plumped up and paid the extra for DDR5? Who knows? Anyway, I've been Mike. This is Mike's unboxing reviews and how to, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.